and consulted with Congress and my national security team, I've determined the nature of the commitment that America is prepared to make beyond 2014. Our objectives are clear. Disrupting threats posed by Al-Qaeda, supporting Afghan security forces, and giving the Afghan people the opportunity to succeed as they stand on their own. Here's how we'll pursue those objectives. First, America's combat mission will be over by the end of this year. Starting next year, Afghans will be fully responsible for securing their country. American personnel will be in an advisory role. We will no longer patrol Afghan cities or towns, mountains or valleys. That is a task for the Afghan people. All right, folks, there you go. That's the president uh, talking about uh, Afghanistan and how we will proceed. Joining us now to talk about uh, all that and more is our panel. And we have uh, retired U.S. Army Major General, founder of Stand Up America, Paul E. Vallely, and also our friend, uh, columnist uh, for Breitbart.com and American thinker, C. Edmund Wright. Hello, gentlemen. Hello, Hello Steve. Steve. General. All right, General, let me start with you, sir. Uh, so much to talk about. We had the speech at West Point today uh, where I think the president actually telegraphed too much about how we proceed with the war on terror. But let's talk about Afghanistan first. Um, is this a, a realistic goal? Is this a, a workable goal? Or is, is, is Afghanistan destined to, uh, to turn back into a hotbed of al-Qaeda and, of course, the Taliban? Well, I think all of those things, uh, you know, I've been against our strategy over there from the beginning since uh, uh, the fall of 2001 with 100 guys and air power. We basically neutralized the Taliban and al-Qaeda. But when we look at now and dealing in the realities of what they call it in a future strategy, uh, Afghan is not a threat to the United States or to its interests right now. Al-Qaeda has moved most of its elements, planning over into uh, the African Middle East area, Primarily, one area now is Libya. And so when we look to the future, uh, 9,000 or 5,000 over there, uh, they're going to continue to be uh, targeted uh, with uh, the IEDs and bombs and so on. And uh, if the Afghan people cannot take care of themselves by this time, then uh, I, I just don't see any future for our uh, uh, being there anymore. Yeah, and you know, Edmund, uh I, I, I've had a problem with our policy there for a, a long time, not, 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 as much as, uh, not as long as the general, because I don't know as much as the general, yeah. uh, but uh, certainly once they started tying the hands of our soldiers, um, I, I've always been in favor of just, just saying uh, you, you can't expect them to fight and die there with a, a hand tied behind their back. No, I agree, and, and I too know less than the general on these issues. Uh, you know, I, I don't think you can really separate totally the Afghanistan speech, which I, I guess was Memorial Day, and the West Point speech today, you know, because again, we, we're talking in terms of, of removing troops and winding down the war. Uh, you know, there's no talk of objectives, no talk of victory, you know, no talk of why we were there. And, you know, to me, both of these talks were just, this is who Obama is, this is what he thinks of the U.S. and our, our role in the world. And, and uh, it just it, it doesn't match up with my worldview. Yeah. All right. Let, let's move on to today, uh, General. Um, you know, the president uh, basically the gist of his uh, his foreign policy speech at West Point was, "I am not weak," um, and 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 you know he uh, he, he talked about uh, ramping up support for the Syrian rebels. And uh, again, you know, I I, I still I still don't know how we, we we I'm afraid we're giving support to the Syrian rebels who are jihadists. Uh, uh, not the right rebels, and I don't know how if we could distinguish between them. You're more, much more expert at that than I am. Uh, but he also talked about, um, you know, he, he, he telegraphed to the to the uh, to the terrorists all over the world. He said basically the days of going into a country to get terrorists just because there are terrorists there are over. Uh, you know, we'll we'll work in other ways. He basically <laughs> gave them a, a sigh of relief to breathe instead of just saying we're going to continue our war on terror not being specific, let them think we're coming, and shut up about it. Well, he's such a weak leader, and uh, he's not capable of being president of the United States in these times of uh, international tensions and so on. He uh, plays wiffle ball while Putin plays uh, hardball. 
Uh, I'm the only one that's been on the ground in Syria to have vetted out the elements over there, Steve. And uh, now they're coming on saying they're going to help the Free Syrian Army, the true Free Syrian Army, which I told them to do 18 months ago, and we could have turned the situation against Assad over there. But then we had elements going in uh, supported by Qatar uh, to support the Muslim Brotherhood, uh, and now a flood of al-Qaeda and uh, uh, elements into that area. Uh, but. Uh, he doesn't have any credibility, Obama doesn't. Uh, it's all talk, it's all rhetoric. Uh, people overseas know that. Uh, when I was in Egypt uh, four weeks ago, I mean, they just couldn't believe that we have an administration and a White House that's supporting the Muslim Brotherhood and Al-Qaeda today. And uh, I can do some breaking news to you on Benghazi if we have time, but if we don't, we can do that later. Well, why don't, well why, 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 we'll do that right after the... Uh right after the break. But uh, Edmund, uh, what, what about uh, his West Point speech today and, and some of the specifics? You know, I, I just thought it was, uh, it was one big hashtag moment. You know, uh, he, he talks about leading globally, but then that's showing restraint. Uh, you know, he, he, he talks about the fact that we've rarely been stronger, but as the general said, you know, while we're playing wiffle ball in the Ukraine, uh, in Georgia and everywhere else, Putin's playing hardball. Uh, you know, it, it's just, uh, I mean, paper tiger is too generous of a term. Uh, it's definitely leading from behind strategy. Uh, absolutely. All right, General, before, before, before we uh, c c come back and reconvene and talk about uh, your breaking news of Benghazi, uh, you have a, ch a charity raffle going, uh, correct? Well, we do. Uh, in uh, 48 hours, uh, we're uh, auctioning off, raffling off a uh, 1966 uh, Mustang. Uh, and also a uh, new Omen uh, 300 uh, caliber wind mag. So uh, they can go on the website or uh, uh, go to the uh, information I gave you, and we're raising money, and we'll go to the Soldiers Memorial Fund, which is named uh, for, in benefit for my son, who I lost in 2004 in Special Forces. Uh, give, a, give, us a, give us a couple of websites. Give us one website they should go to and uh, check this out. Uh, StandUpAmericaUS.org. 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 Stand up America, stand Stand up, StandUpAmericaUS.org and uh, participate right. in the, uh, the, uh, the gun and the, uh, and the 66 Mustang uh, charity uh, raffle. That, that's, that's great and a, a great cause. And uh, uh, friends and supporters of Stand Up America and the uh, Scott Vallely Soldiers Fund. But it, you only got 48 hours to do it, so get, get there and, and do it. All right, folks, uh, let us know what you think about today's uh, hot topics. Here's how you could do it. Watch the screen.